Hello folks and welcome to Steam Next Games Week, where we've got a bunch of new demos to try out. I've got a bunch of them, I'm going to see if I can run through them quickly and maybe even put up a couple of videos before the <laughs> before the the fest is actually over. Um, this is like the first one that really got my attention, the one that made me pay attention to Steam Fest as a general. I saw it, I think, in an article last week. The game called Breachway, which is a... It's a space strategy, card-based, roguelike. Like, this basically ticks every single box for me. Aesthetically, well, supposedly, I haven't played it yet. This is my first tryout. We're literally going to hit new run for the very first time now. Which supposedly is a um, roguelike card deck builder in space with spaceships that looks kind of homeworld-esque and kind of aesthetic. I mean, this is made for me, right? From what I saw on paper, this is made for me. So, uh... I think in the settings I actually haven't checked anything here. I don't think we're good. Good. Anyway, let's go. New run. I know nothing about this game other than what I read. So, we're exploring it all together now. A sudden jolt awakes you as you hear the distinct beeping of doors opening. As reality creeps back in, you slowly recognize your surroundings. The, cr the cramped confines of your quarters on the Atlas. Hey, wake up. The captain wants to see us on the command deck. He seems pretty agitated and you look groggy as hell. So just let me do the talking. Good. There's an unusual flurry of activity as you enter the command deck. The captain, studying the data feed in one of the consoles, beckons the two of you over. Our infrared sensors detected a large explosion in Solari space, right where one of the research stations is located. Whatever they're up to, it looks like it didn't go as planned. So this might be our big break then. A chance to turn this scavenging mission around and not go home empty-handed. Could well be. We're closer to the station than any of the Solari fleets in the system. We can't risk approaching the Atlas, however as it would be picked up by the fleet scanners and we'd be done for. A small ship like the Magpie, though, launched at our current speed, could get there undetected. It'll run a minim minimal reactor capacity using only maneuvering thrusters for flight path adjustments. With all due respect, sir, the fireworks will likely attract other scavengers by the time we get there. Which is why the lieutenant here is tasked with protecting the Magpie in case things go south. I'll assemble a team while you make the necessary preparations. Report to the docking bay in 30 minutes. Okay. This is the ship's data screen where you can view statistics such as number and types of hardpoints, starting crew, and equipment. Each piece of equipment contains a few starting cards and has the capacity to add more cards as you play. Equipment has requires an assigned crew member to function. If you want a better look at your ship, you can orbit the camera while keeping the left mouse button pressed. Okay. So this is our little magpie. We have four energy, which I'm assuming that's cards per that's, that's mana per turn. We have a laser cutter that does three damage. I'm assuming that's three damage, rather than three cost. We have to have Ivan Branko. Next attack playing this turn deals plus 50% damage. Yeah. We have an AI running a launch bay with nothing to launch bay for basic shield. So we have our attack, we have our blocks. We have our target lock. Lena Starling, our tactical officer. External attachment, auxiliary mount. I do want to get a better looking ship. So let's just magpie. Fair enough, let's go. Let's see what goes there. Okay, this is our little roguelike map. Alright, if we just follow the nav points I laid out, we should be at the wreckage in about two days, and then we rendezvous back with the Atlas. We just stick to the asteroid belt as much as we can to avoid detection. Easy. I don't... I really don't see why the captain decided to put you in charge of my ship. Watch your tone. While we're on this mission, this is your new captain. Come on now, we've got a mission to do. You can fight all you want once we're back on the hauler. Soon things settle down and everyone is at the assigned post. Time to start familiarizing yourself with the ship's command console. Okay, so I'm assuming this, this, this is the um, our little prologue bit. This is us here. We want to get there. We can take a side jump over there. Let's go to the waypoint then. Bam. Your console flashes a warning indicating combat near your flight path. Not long after, the infrared sensors flare as a ship explodes. The remaining ship changes course, heading in your direction. There's no way to their sensor spotted us. We've been getting, running cold for almost a day now. Just our luck then. Their flight path will take them right within radio detector range. Prepare combat protocols. FTL-ish as well. I was, I was also described as basically as very FTL-ish. I can see that. I can immediately see that. This is your kind of cards, displaying the actions you can take each turn. Each card requires resources to pay. Okay, so that, that is the resources paid. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was resources paid or damage done. The 
current energy is energy. We get energy. We get six. We have six energy now and four per turn. We should just carry over between turns. Up to a cap, maybe. Enemy actions are based on their equipment. Each piece of equipment has a card slot indicating the next action. Cards gain one pip each turn. When all pips are filled, the card border turns white, signaling that it will be played on the next turn. You play cards by dragging and dropping them over the crosshair region. Attack the enemy by playing two slice cards to advance. Okay, so we have here. It does four damage with precision, able to target equipment. This does four shield points and depletes, removed from never played, and you have a your weapon and your things. We have cards in hand, four, or discard pile, or health. Gain four shield points, slice. Laser does four damage. Beep. Beep. And turn, good, yep. Shields are your primary defense, with each shield point blocking one damage. Shields have at the start of each turn, so deploy shield cards just before an enemy attack for maximum effectiveness. Okay, so they're going to attack us with a laser that does 4 damage. 4 shield points. After playing a card, it moves to your cooldown pile. Cooldown duration is indicated in the number next to the timing icon on the card. Once off cooldown, it returns to your draw pile. There's a tab key for an overview of cards. Okay, it's literally... Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, bucket lock. Deals plus one damage, play at least one attack per turn. Lasts no, it's three turns until cooldown. Okay. End your turn. The laser pulse zaps us like so. Persistence effects on your ship appear above your appear above your card hand. Some effects last for a certain amount of turns, but others have an upkeep condition. You have to meet each turn to keep the condition in effect. So we'll target use target lock. Do more plus one damage. Ah, see, now we get plus four, we'll have two and three, so we can block and also... We'll be able to block and also use a, a, a beam. So they're gonna shoot us, we block, and also we slice. Enemy shields down. Lower the shields, they have one more hit to go. The next attack we get will finish them off. There you go. Now. Brilliant. Okay. Rewards, some cash. The area is starting to get pretty lively. We should expect more combat on our approach to the station. Looks like we're not the only ones stupid enough to raid a Solari facility. We should like to hide our presence now. Asking for permission to restore the reactor's Odinus protocol, that would allow us to squeeze some more power out of it. It will also improve our laser's photon output. Permission granted. Override the safety protocols, we will need more power power. Hi, Captain. That should enable it to emit concentrated laser pulses. It won't be military-grade laser, but it'll be close. Now it to the Ordnance resource. Ordnance is the main resource for attacks. Open your ship's data screen to inspect your resource area. Left click on Ordnance to add your extra reactor power to it. You can distribute reactor power between your resources at any time. Click on Energy twice to remove two power from it and add two to Ordnance. Does that mean... Does that mean laser pulses require ordnance, and beams require ordnance and energy. Aha. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I see. So you have resources for a different kind of thing. Attacks will use ordnance, etc., etc. You've got a ship closing in on an attack vector. Looks like pirates. More... More... Ooh, I like that ship design. What do you got here? A laser pulse and a shield pulse. You can redistribute reactor power at any time during combat. Right click and move. Adding one power to a resource generates heat. Heat changes take place after playing the next card. Ships have a res heat resistance and dissipation value. Resistance is the amount of heat a ship can safely sustain before overheating. Dissipation is the amount of heat removed at the start of each turn. Every point of overheat deals hull damage at the start of your turn. Okay, so you're, you're attacking us with a beam pulse, so we're going to go for ahead and block that. And we'll use our beam suite to do six damage and ignites three, which will in increase your heat by three. By three or two? Breach hull damage, right. It's heat, it's ignite. Three, and ignite does one heat for every X hull damage. 
Okay. Well, we did the ton in the turn there. You beam us. Heavy blast. Ah, use your laser pulses. Enemy target by heavy blasts. We need to take out that. So we need precision effects that can target specific cards. However, we haven't got the... Right click to discard a card. Okay, so... We need two... We can use, I need to basically remove a point from you and put a point there. Oh, that doesn't change the actual amount we have. Okay, fine. Okay. We shall, we shall discard... Target. Uh, no, we can target... We can target lock. And laser pulse. To destroy fire damage to you. I'm okay with keeping that up. We're going to get enough points to fire that again, and it'll just, it'll, it'll be good for us. You can right-click to discard unwanted cards. What you, you you want us to remove... I want to get rid of that. It doesn't shoot at us. We don't need block right now. The shield bonus happens there. You can beam... You can... Beam sweep here. Enemy shield down. That's fine. They'll die next turn because their shield pulse is down and we can beam sweep them to death. Cross coming cooldown next turn. Ah, I see. There you go. Look at a fashion subsystem to add to your cargo bay. Any attack from this weapon that adds deals hull damage adds plus one heat. Take that, thank you very much. We should hook up the mass refiner to the, mo to the reactor. It's crucial for improving our reactor's power output and strengthening the magpie shield system. It was originally meant for deflecting dust in minor asteroids, not high-powered lasers. I can modify it to suspend high-density particles in its magnetic field, defeating laser beams and absorbing kinetic force. This improves defense, but requires mass. We've also salvaged a functional subsystem from that ship. I'm sure we can put it to good use. It might help us get out of this one in one piece. I'll be claiming that as reparations for my ship when we're back on the Atlas. The magpie will need a new coat of paint when all this is over. You can upgrade your reactor with credits. Each upgrade gives you reactor power. Boop. You can give some mass resource. Okay, so modified shield requires one mass and two energy. That's fine. Um, subsystems enhance compatible equipment. Drag and drop into the modified cutter for application. Only one substance can be applied. You can sneeze. Excuse me. Boop. So now these now deal heat damage. More than the others, I guess. Okay. Next one. Next one. Section wreckage. The remains of the station are in view. Seems being quiet, but the tension of the crew is palpable. Judging by the infrared emissions, there should be still be some functional equipment we can salvage in that section over there. Wait, look at the fluctuation in those readings. I'll bet you a week's rations is a ship lying in wait and spring an ambush. Prep the laser and let's go around and get the jump on them instead. You've got combat training... Um, I'm assuming you have combat training skill, and that gives you the ability to do this. Overload cannons. Ah. Crew members have abilities you can activate at will during combat. To inspect abilities, hover over a crew member's portrait. Abilities do not use regular resources, instead use command resources and have a cooldown after use. Your command point capacity is determined by the amount of crew on board. So you can do overload cannons, the next attack does extra damage. You need laser, you need laser pulse and firefly. So firefly, so laser pulse is damaged now. And firefly is damaged in a turn. So we shall... We can do, we can do a laser pulse. Which will breach shields, although you're getting shield back every turn, it looks like. Um, laser pulse. Um, Firefly launcher. Enemy shields down. And we shall also block. Get that up. Okay. Self fires that'll that'll arrive in a turn. That's delayed for a turn, so you have to basically do some more damage here. 
We can shoot the gnome with special missile defense cards. I haven't got missile defense cards, so we will use a block to have enough shields to take the hit there. We have seven shields. Oh dear. We're going to take some damage off this, aren't we? Okay. We're going to take some... Damn it, I should've, I should've, I should've, I should've, ah, uh, can I, I don't go get, I don't, I don't get to go back, do I? Damn it, I should've activated uh, the ch tune generator. Fiddle, um. Doing six damage. Uh, can I, if I generate two of every resource, I can beam sweep again. That'll do a bunch of damage to you and overheat you as well, so. Let's try that. You're, you're, you're overheating now. Considerably, I'll take a damage here. That was a fool. Yeah, I took a bit of damage there. Now, uh, either puzzle is going to happen again, so... Can I leave it? Um, four damage. I can do six damage to this. If I do target lock, he's now doing five damage. Plus 50%. I haven't got the power for that blast at all. Never mind. Put damage onto that. I'm very certain you're dead next turn anyway. So I have to worry about the blocking, I think. I can do a double block. I cannot do a double block, but I can do tune generator. Block that gives me nine points of shield, and then onto that can just mitigate that. Boom. That's down. You'll die to burn. You die to burn? No, you don't die to burn. It's just shy of dying to burn. But the shield should stop everything. Good. And we'll just beam sweep you to death. Yeah, that was silly. I could have probably done that without taking damage. Ooh, basic missile rack. Yay. I'll grab that and it can add a card as well. Okay, let's see. Add a card. Uh, we can add a Blinding Pulse, deals 4 damage, next turn enemy attack deals 2 less damage, which requires a lot of energy. We can raise shield, if you don't have shield, adds 12 shield points and 1 duration, otherwise add shield shield points. Or we can do Harnessed Strike, gain 1 shield point every time you pay a laser or ion attack. Of course, 4 mass to do. Um, raising shield, we shall raise shields. I'm gonna make, we get a basic missile pack. Star flares. Two six damage in a turn depletes. So we can only have two missiles, at which point you have to do next have to wait until the next combat, I suppose. Morale determines the rate at which your crew command will chart on entering a node. Some choices can affect morale. Okay, so these crew things are more important, because they don't just come back. Area clear, no further hostiles in engagement range, deploying a set a recon drone for a visual sweep of the wreckage. Look at that, behind that plating, that black box is the station's main data storage and backup unit. It's bound to have a lot of variable research data we can sell. Who knows what they were cooking up here. Are you out of your mind? If the Solari catches wind of us stealing that, we're as good as dead. We need a new air recycling and ventilation system back at the station, don't we? This is why we went on the scavenging run in the first place. This will bring in enough credits for all that and more. Enough squabbling. We've got a limited window before the host more hostiles arrive. Our orders are to retrieve all valuable salvage, so let's get to work. Who quickly works to retrieve the black box and fill the magpie's cargo bay with any valuable salvage they can find. After the work is done, you set course for the rendezvous point within the with the atlas. Back there, I guess. We got a missile pack in the launch bay. There, good. We can fire a couple of missiles. There. And we head back. How are we doing over here? 175 for the next power up. Incoming tight beam transmission from the atlas. Magpie, this is the Atlas. We've got a situation. The Solari have flagged us for interrogation. They've most likely got all their sensors pointed at us until we meet up with the patrol ships. Any attempt to pick you up will incriminate us both. We'll be fine, but I'm afraid you'll have to return to the station on your own. Keep your burn minimal and maintain a low profile until you're clear. I've heard about Solari interrogation methods. I wouldn't want to be on the Atlas right now. There's an alternate route we can take that will keep us away from any major fight flight corridors and known Solari fleet positions. Should work. We have enough Delta V and remaining fuel to get us to the station. That'll take us straight to the deadweight controlled territory, though. A solitary scavenger ship is sure to attract some attention from those pirate scum. We'd best be on our toes. But we can't go there. 
There are two types of paths in the breachway. Main paths, shown as a blue line, allows only forward movement. Secondary paths, marked by thin yellow lines, permit both forward and backward movement. Moving to a node on a secondary path consumes one fuel. We can't go there, because it's unavailable, so we have to go around this place. So we go boop boop. Captain, we've intercepted a distress call. A civilian transport is under attack by a deadweight raider. It won't last long without our intervention. If we reroute power to the thrusters for max burn, we could intercept in time, pulling the raider's focus. That's too risky. It would leave us exposed during the approach. The deadweight could attack us freely, and we'd be defenseless until combat systems are online. It's a calculated risk. Diverting their fire from the transport to us is the only way to save that ship. Our hull should hold against the barrage. Uh, so we can... We can gain one morale, and they get enemy initiative. Yep, I'll take that. Acknowledge, Captain. It's the right call. Preparing for maneuvers now. You divert all power to the engines and fire up the thrusters to their maximum capacity. Before long, the deadweight ship stops firing the civilian transport and turns its attention to you. Okie dokie. Immediate attack on us. Immediate attack on us. Okay. Flak weapons. The enemy has a flak weapon. Flak weapons inflict random damage within a range. <clears throat> Attacks have a shredding value. Hull damage from a shrek that is equal or higher than the attack's shredding value triggers a shred status effect on the targets. Each shred stack raises flak's minimum damage by one. Shred decreases by one if not applied in a turn. Okay, you do between three and seven damage, and as long as you hit, if you do the, if you do more than five damage, you get a stack of shredding. Don't like that at all. So, what's my situation here? We're taking maybe between three and seven. If I do a shield block, it'll it'll block. It has a high chance of blocking all the damage. When we have a five left over, we can shield pulse the flak battery. And also Star Flare for next turn. We sell away. Black does four damage. We're good. We sell hits. Fantastic. We have a shield, so I don't want to raise shields right now. Um, we're about to get by four and ignite three. So we are on one shield. I will raise my shield. I will do regular block and laser pulse again. There. In turn. They've got very efficient, very efficient uh, heating there. Laser pulse just to, to, to wipe out the flak barrage. Uh, we're gonna lose a shield point next turn. Um, I'll, I'll drop that. Ray shields. Right, seventeen health left. You can hit us for. We have one damage. You can hit us for four. Raise the block, laser pulse. Can I keep can I keep damaging this? Keep it down? No. It doesn't actually keep it down. I can keep damaging it, it doesn't actually do anything. Also need to basically turn the target lock on first next time. Okay, now flak burst again. No, actually flak burst is not around, so we can clear that out. Uh, target lock. Laser pulse. Might as well put some damage on you then. The flak barrier just oh the flak barrier is coming. No, it's not. It's not coming now. No, my mistake. It's not coming now. Have we synced them up? We've synced them up. Okay, that's not great. Um <laughs> that's not great at all. Let us beam sweep. First of all. Good. That did that, which is what I wanted it to do, and you can block to guarantee to block all the damage. And you're overheating, so I think you die to this anyway. Yeah. Good. Ah, did we get a card? A fire, so we have capacitor, gain four energy to deplete. Firecracker, deal two time, for two damage, three times in one turn deplete, or blinding pulse. Um, me capacitor, a flat, just, oop, or, uh, you want. Me capacitor. No, our PDC array. Which has target lock as well and PDC burst. If it missile incoming, destroy one missile, else deal two damage, no visual effects. <laughs> no VFX, like deplete. Oh, you only got one shot at the damn thing. Huh. <clears throat> Auxiliary equipment, put that on the Augs mount. Boop. Um, okay. 
Repair station? You come across an abandoned repair station. A large part of it has been stripped clean by scavengers, but upon closer inspection, one of the maintenance bays still seems to be functional. It might not look like it, but some of the equipment left here is actually in good working condition. We repaired our hull. Good. So our gunship is getting ready to fire. They must have some stealth tech that kept them hidden from the magpie senses until they made their way into the direct engagement range. We've got incoming hail. There you are, little magpie. We've been looking forward to have a word with you. This doesn't need to get messy. Hand over that data core you've got in your hold, and you'll fly away unscathed with the rest of your salvage. Power down and prepare for boarding. Captain, if we power down our reactor, we're as good as dead. We're dead either way. We can't take a, li a light cruiser on in this ship. Then we go down swinging. I'm not taking orders from a pirate. It saddens me to hear you choose violence, Captain. The data core is designed to withstand thermonuclear blasts. Don't expect us to hold back. I'm assuming they're going to fire a nuke at us. That's what the PD is for. Okay. Careful that spread shot can shoot down our missiles. So we can't shoot missiles until that's d until it's destroyed. So it can fire every turn. So let's scrap the missile. You're shooting us with a spread shot that does some damage to us. Um, so that's, that damage is coming through no matter what. Um, so we will laser pulse. Oh, we actually get to we can actually target on the ship. Boop. There. I can star flare, but there's no point in star flaring now, so we actually remove the star flare. Until that's down, we can't fire any missiles. Red shot. Kill the damage there. Right. Star flare, laser pulse, spread shot. Okay, ray shields. Perfect time to ray shields. Ray shields. We have 12 shields. Sitting there, four. Six will be next turn. Um. Oops, uh, beam sweep. Okay, so damage was spread between these two. Take aim, deals plus one damage. Forever, I guess. Um, okay, so we should be okay. We're taking no damage now. Boink. One damage. The star flare launches. Light barrage. It's a flack and shreds. That doesn't, that doesn't actually do damage to... Oh, we have... We have do I give a crap about a, Pete, about, a, about a star flare? Really? You're about to target us with a two to five there. So if I, if I block and remove that block there, possibly a mistake. Like this star flare, we can we can we can just we can just chunk that star flare down. That's not a problem. Predictive aim. The next flak attack deals max damage, which is going to be the light barrage over there. I don't like that, um, at all. Um, the Starfighter's about to launch for 7 damage. That's still active. Is that active forever now? Sad if true. Laser Pulse and, oh god, we're gonna get a lot of damage here. Um, I could target... I can just say to hell with the damn thing and target lock. Laser Pulse for 5 damage. On that. Should have done Overload Cannons, Nemo. Overload cannons is that exists for a reason. You will use it. Yeah, we've been shredded as well. Star flare. Blind. Okay. We got target lock active. Can I double target lock? What's attacking me this turn? The barrage, the light, light barrage over there. And there's also a PDC burst. So I've only got two. I've only got three to six, or a guaranteed seven. There are four things coming off cooldown now. Unfortunately, you are hitting us with a barrage, and I can't stop that. Ow, that's another shred point. Okay, right. The blind's gonna trigger now as well, so. We can laser pulse that. That stop, that's not gonna have, that's not gonna have a go. But beam sweep's gonna hit us for, for a bunch, though. So I can block. If I block that, it helps a little bit. Um, although my target lock is gone now, because I haven't actually shot, shot anything. I can't raise shields. No! Hang on. 
Where the hell are you? Where the hell are you? We've, we've gotten cards back that we haven't gotten yet. Uh, anyway, that's out, so we can start player up. Also, beam sweep. Bunch of damage there. That's gonna get. We're gonna get hit by a bunch now. Laser cooldown. Cool down the charge laser and burning it again. Predictive aim. Max, next flak attack does max damage, so that's gonna do six. That's no. That's eight. good. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I hit there. That flak is still down. So I'll star flare again. What's happening this turn? Nothing specific. That's not firing. Predictive aim is happening. Um, if I don't, if I don't actually use this, I can raise shield next turn because I'm getting two points here. I've got more than enough mass at the moment. I've got more than enough mass at the moment. I'm at half health as well. Hits. Right, re-raise. Now we raise shield. That spread shot's back online again. Although we can laser pulse to get this straight. Okay, so let raise shield. Laser pulse you. None of that. None of that, please. So between the six, between the a six and a seven. So if you roll a five or a six, you get through our shields. Other than that, I think we're okay. Although I could block to increase even further. That would be eighteen. I'm not going to, because that could cause us problems in the long run. I don't know how much damage that did. A capacitor, thank god for that. Okay, so if I if I do boop 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 boop. Capacitor just get a bunch of energy there. Bam. Um Okay, so what's actually coming in this turn? It's the spread shot and the star flare next turn. So we can talk so we can we can Spread shot six. And there's a chance that nothing happens here, right? So if we just uh, put some shots into that. Should have target locked first. Nemo, damn it. Be better at this. Okay. Soft fire is out. Laser pulse is on cooldown. Spread shots are up, though, so we can. A seven there and a zero to six there. That's going to give me another six. That takes me up to seven. That's 10. So as long as like, a 3 is okay, 4, 5, 6 does more damage to us. Um, so we will now target lock. This is a target lock that doesn't require mass. Okay, let's get rid of that then. Beam sweep. Good. Beam sweep did damage. They've got to work on that, that there. There's some blind. Rain. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Dang it. Well, what's happening now? Light barrage, laser pulse, everything's back off cooldown for these people. It's, everything's up online at once. Which is not great. In the grand scheme of things, it is not great. Um I can double block though, right? That's what five is two six, so we can double block. So the star flare is next mission, is next turn. We'll point into the laser barrage the barrage over there. That is blind. Okay. Star flare next turn. Why do you have so many more star flares than us? Like we're actually like out of cards we can actually use right now. Um, I can't even use raised shields now. So you're gonna hit me for what? Um, seven, seven. Because I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, it's not gonna fire. Um, seven damage. You're overheating now. Seven's gonna go through. It's gonna hit damage seven. I should have used you. I forget to use overload cannons. We're taking damage. Hopefully. Missile launched. Wait, what? Okay, friends have just arrived and basically going to kill that. Can we? I was gonna say, can we do it first? We have eight there. That's gonna do seven damage. Okay. Look at your company. Ah! 
Lame. Lame. They realized I had lethal. The second they realized I had lethal, they're like, nope. <laughs> nope, we're gonna stop this right now. They stopped the second they realized I had lethal. <sighs> Let's see, a light torpedo. Um, does two health damage after two turns, requires three ordnance production. Grid fire. Ah, really, I, I'd like to see the rest of this card because I don't, I can't see the bottom of the card. That's a very bad gameplay. Okay, never mind, I can scroll down. Um, if no missile, in, take down three missiles, deals me, does not deplete. That, I like that because it doesn't deplete. Harness strike. You have that before. Blinding pulse. As precision as well, so that would be a good thing to do there. He also does the damage two times. That's fantastic. I'll take grid fire. Is that that is, that is the bad the, the bad target lock comes from the the PDC. Looks like we arrived just in time, Captain. The director dispatched us for your safe return after hearing about the Atlas incident. We'll continue the pursuit of that ship. Your path is the station is secure. Home station up ahead, Captain. Preparing docking procedures. Once docked, the station's spin gravity kicks in. You and your suit disembark and head to your station quarters to rest while dock workers start unloading the cargo bay. A few hours later, you are called to meet the station director under in her office. I've had our researchers look at the data you've brought back in that black box. While heavily encrypted, Rin managed to extract some data on the research they were conducting at the station. It has to do with the anomaly that swept through our system a while ago, locking out a large part of our electronics. The equipment aboard the research station was able to extract some sort of information from it, leading to them to believe it was a message or signal of unknown origins. Their data shows multiple star systems within the Breachway network were similarly affected, which led them to trace the trajectories to a set of coordinates where they would converge. Wherever it may be, this information is too dangerous to keep here. Solari will come looking for it sooner or later. They're already moving their fleets too close to the system's breachway access points. They don't want this getting out. Take the black box with you and leave. Rin will accompany you to try and further decrypt the data. Judging by the Solari response, this signal might lead to something important that could shift the balance of power. Me and Ivan are joining you as well. We want to see this to the end. We are preparing a Corvette-class gunship in the hangar for you. Posing as a mercenary will allow you to move freely within the Breachway network without raising suspicions. Once you are ready to leave, head to a random system in the Breachway network, and from there start making your way towards the signal. This should make it more difficult for the Solari to connect you to this whole thing. Godspeed, Captain. Ooh, is this the good moment? Is this the good moment? Yeah, baby! Here we go. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff here. Okay, so... This is the Arbalist. Oh, I picked the wrong thing. Excuse me, hang on. That was not my intention. I wasn't. I was trying to pick different weapon ship types. Can, can we can we back out to the main menu? Because I'm assuming this is the new new run, no pro prologue. I'm assuming we can just go back to here. Yeah. Okay. So to the arbalist. Okay. So the arbalist is what we have here. Is this the ship in the in the in the, uh, in the beginning screen? We have a pulse laser mark two, weapon mount for AI, a launch bay, barrier shields, uh, res resource booster, a utility hard point, etc. etc. Some ordnance. We can also create, improve our capacity here. Marauder has higher mass, lower energy. Instead of a pulse laser, we have a light flat gun, basic shield. Res Augmenter. A Lancer, which is the one we were just fighting, I think, has a rail gun. So, so, so what is it? So this is, the Arbalest is, what? Blue. These are this is these are dead weights. These are what Solari, maybe, or these are more dead weights. Are these Solari? Okay, that symbol that means means anything to me. It does not. But yeah, okay. You know what? This is gonna be a demo. Like, this is gonna be a one-off. I'll, I'll I'll stop it here for now. We'll pick the Arbalest. That seems to make sense according to the plot. And um, you'll carry on next time, folks. I'll see you then with the Breachway demo. Bye bye.